Hello, my name is Elsa Augustine. Thank you so much for joining me today on this talk about forming your voice. Um, today's talk is less about new ideas. In fact, there's a lot that I'll chat about that are things you probably already know. Um, but rather what I'm hoping from this discussion is that you will have a chance to think about your voice and that we'll provide a few um, practical steps on how to form your voice and use your voice as a product manager. So a little bit about my background. Uh, I, I went to school for a degree in electrical engineering and coming out of school, um, I joined consulting. Um, I was at Deloitte Consulting in the technology practice and spent about five years there. Um, I loved a lot of aspects of consulting, uh, but one inch that I had was to get a little closer to the end user. Um, and so I decided to pursue my MBA. And um, right after school, I joined Google as a product manager um, and have been there for about four years. Uh, so I will say, make the disclaimer that everything in this presentation is my opinion and my experience and content that um, you know, is, doesn't represent uh, that of Google. So outside of work, I love spending time with my husband and children. And so before diving into the presentation, I wanted to talk about a story about my family to illustrate um, why forming an opinion as a PM is so important. So my son is very fortunate uh, to be surrounded by a very loving family. My parents um, enjoy displaying affection uh, by buying gifts. They enjoy buying gifts and the joy that their grandson gets when he receives a gift. My husband feels pretty strongly that our son shouldn't receive too many gifts and um, is especially wary about building a relationship that might be based on something that's material. Um, so in this scenario, I play the role of compromiser, trying to consider everyone's thoughts, feelings, opinions, values, and find the middle ground. And during this time, I was talking to one of my closest friends about this, and she knows me really well. And she asked me what my opinion was. I don't know. I hadn't really stopped to think. It was then that I had realized that I hadn't formed my own opinion about the scenario. And I was too busy trying to find the right compromise or solution. And to relate this back to product management, you can find yourself in this spot um, if you don't have your own voice. And um, this shouldn't be the way that we drive products. If we don't have a voice, you can be kind of caught up just processing a lot of information, trying to make decisions, but not really listening or uh, knowing what your particular point of view is to help drive and navigate those conversations. So in this scenario, I thought about it. Um, and it wasn't just about making sure others were feeling okay and good. Well, that is important. Um, it was about making a decision that would impact my son's values and also make sure that he has the right strong relationship with his grandparents. So it took me a moment, pull together my thoughts, but once I formed an opinion about um, what the solution should be or what, what we want for those values to be, uh, the execution and the solution itself uh, became much clearer. So now let's jump into the product management side of things. So, your voice as a PM will help you have uh, direction as you think about processing data and other people's opinions. Um, it'll help you paint a vision. It'll help you as you inspire and influence others, which is extremely critical. And it'll help you as you're making trade-offs. There's a ton of tough, tough decisions that you have to make and having your voice can be that compass that helps guide you. So what does it mean to form your voice? I'll take a step back to talk about uh, my first meeting with a, a new manager when I was starting out as a PM. And he told me, it's really important to form your voice. And I walked out of the meeting a little puzzled. What did that mean? Why was a voice so important? How do I form a voice? Um, did it mean speaking up? Did it mean saying something that would wow my teammates? And it took me a little while, you know, I thought about it a lot, um, but I think he was absolutely right. And a few years into product management, um, that here's what I think forming a voice means. To form your voice is to build a point of view, so to have an opinion that's guided by your core values, 
that's using a lot of information that you'll be gathering and the experiences that you have both as a PM, but also what you're bringing in, uh, coming into that role. Your voice is not static. It's not that you find your opinion and that's it. Um, it evolves and it evolves immensely as you grow. And the last point here is that you need to use your voice. Um, it's important that you form your voice, but figuring out how to use it, when to use it, um, and using it to solve problems is also equally important. So here's what I think forming a voice is. Um, I should check with my former manager to see if this matches what he had in mind during our first one-on-one. -on -one. So let's talk about how to get started uh, forming your voice. So to get started, we'll talk about self-reflection. Starts with you. Wherever you are in your PM journey or life in general, you need self-reflection. Um, this is something that I learned about uh, during business school, and I want to give credit to my professor, Harry Kramer, um, who really moved me to understand the importance of self-reflection. To form a voice means that you have to know yourself, you have to know what your core values are, what motivates you, what is your expertise, what are you really good at, what are your soft spots, what are the things that you don't know. Um, and I was really fortunate during business school to have a lot of time to do this and build a, a habit of self-reflection. And I wanna give a couple of concrete examples of what helped me um, from my reflection in forming my voice. So one thing I've learned is that I'm at my best when I can be vulnerable. Um, so I tend to have a pretty uh, vulnerable tone as I speak to a lot of folks, just being really open about what I, I know and don't know. And um, one thing that I, I learned, especially from talking to one of my close friends, is that that can be a superpower. Um, and I had never thought of it that way, but understanding that and building that awareness has allowed me to use that as a tool in forming my voice. Another thing that I know uh, is a soft spot for me is I tend to be risk averse. So I tend to have this um, risk mitigation or like avoiding big risk uh, type reaction to a lot of things. And for me, this can be a soft spot. Um, so this is something where I know I need to actively find accountability and find things that will give me that courage to take on the risks in a very um, you know, thoughtful way. And the reason that I want to actually mention and call out soft spots is that when you are building products, you're not going at this alone. And this next, next quote will help me transition into uh, the next piece of forming your voice. So knowing what you don't know is more useful than being brilliant. Um, I love this quote because it highlights that while you have a number of responsibilities, you're not building anything by yourself. You're leaning on many smart, passionate people around you that have uh, different experiences, information, opinions, and I think putting all of that together helps you build a stronger product. So um, for me personally, the way I would use this is, you know, I had limited breadth of research or user research um, when I was going about my first PM role. And I loved pulling in UXR, sorry, UX research um, uh, counterpart to early stages of problem, de problem definition because they could give us this breadth and this other lens that I just didn't have um, coming in. So the next piece of forming your voice, I would say, is to ask and listen. Talk to a lot of people. Talk to people, ask them questions, be really curious. And in here, try to dig below the surface as well. Um, you may ask, you know, how do you want to work with a PM and find patterns of um, what would be really helpful that you, you may not have been as aware of um, without having those conversations. So don't take anything at surface level. Make sure that you're asking these questions and even just getting uh, a lot of history and context on the work that you're doing from others. Um, as you're doing this, try to find patterns and themes. They'll start to come up as you're talking to different people and gain, gaining different perspectives on the same, um, same problem and topic. And the last piece I'll talk about um, is as you're doing this, try to look for your future board. And what I mean by board is your personal board of directors. Uh, this is something that I leaned into a lot on and have found really, really powerful. Um, who is the person that's going to be delusionally optimistic that you can go to with that seedling of an idea to help it grow? Who is going to you know, give it to you straight and poke holes at the question, you know, ask the right questions to make sure you're 
uh, testing, stress testing the particular projects or ideas that you have. Trying to figure out who are the right people to go to for those different things is also something that will be really helpful as you're uh, shaping, strengthening your voice and as you're solving problems. So for example, one of the, uh, my go-tos was one of the analytics leads on my previous team um, just had really strong product insight and had this perspective that uh, was really unique because this person just saw a ton of data and saw user behavior and patterns in a way that um, was really unique uh, to, to the team. So for the next piece, for the next piece, I wanna talk about when you're new. If you're new, that's great. You have a superpower. You're going to be able to see things that become difficult to see when you spend a little bit more time. Um, so what do I mean by this? When, uh, when you join a team or you, you start out on a particular product, you have the ability to really see what's difficult to use, what surprises you about the product? Uh, what do you think the user value is of that product? What makes you take delight in the user experience? There's a lot of these things that you're able to provide as input and perspective when you come in. And so write all of those things down when you're brand new. Um, one of the great ways I've seen this done is there is a, a particular right, um, team in which there was a writer that joined and that person did what was called a teardown, which um, I, that was my introduction to that concept where you walk through that product and you actually go piece by piece and write down, you know, what are the things that surprised you, what didn't work, what did work. And it was extremely valuable because over time you'll find that things like organizational structure or your limitations or constraints that are very real that you have to deal with or several other types of reviews that happen can, um, you know, start to muddle a little bit of the decision-making and have influence in a good way on your end product. Um, but that may not make complete sense as a user going through the product. And so coming in with that new lens is a really, really valuable thing. So the next piece is deep care. This is where um, I think about things like, you know, when you're new, how will I ever catch up? People know so much. There's so many years of history, knowledge, context. Um, where am I going to come up with these insights? If these are questions that uh, that you think about, I think the thing that helps you get through them and helps you see the other side of this is deep care. And I, um, a close friend of mine, Rowan Reggie, who is a great, uh, um, has great insights on product management, and definitely check him out on LinkedIn, um, has put together this one page on leadership. And at the center of it all, he puts deep care, which he describes as doing small things with extraordinary care. And I think this is what really helps you make that leap into catching up or coming up with insights because the more you care about your product, the more um, you will start to see about your product. And you'll, you'll be surprised at how much you can learn, glean, um, and be able to lead from having deep care. So literally one of the things I would do is go through product flows in great detail and just pay attention to every every little bit of it. Um, and you start to build that as a muscle and just care very deeply about um, the things that you're working on. These, these insights and things will come to you. And so the last piece is write it down, write it down, write it down. And the reason it's important to write it down and not leave it up here, um, I think is its commitment. When you write it down on a piece of paper or you're on a doc, um, it forces you to commit something to paper. And that act in and of itself starts to help you form a voice. Um, so some very tactical tips. I just have a document that's called a scratch pad where I can throw notes in. The, the word scratch pad makes me feel like it doesn't need to be um, you know, perfect or fully, fully formed yet. Um, if you have a journal or a notepad, the act of actually writing is also helpful in synthesizing and processing the information that you're getting. And if you're up for it, create a point of view document. It doesn't even need to be shared with anyone, but just to start forming that um, point of view, it's really helpful to have. Um, and it's a good forcing function to start thinking about these things. So quick recap, talked about self-reflection, 
ask and listen. If you're new, great. You have a superpower. Have deep care about your product and your team and write it down. Commit it to paper. All right. So for the next piece, let's talk about using your voice, um, your voice in practice. So the first thing I'll say is don't wait. Uh, this might be very specific to me, but I tend to uh, hold on to my opinions until I feel a lot more confident about what I'm about to say. Um, not that that's a bad thing, but you're going to be a little uncomfortable at first, just um, if it's your first time expressing your opinions or point of view. And you don't want to wait for too long because it gets shaped by the experiences of being able to share them. Um, so the other thing I will mention is um, the point of not waiting and expressing your voice or using your voice is uh, it's not about trying to wow anyone or to prove yourself, but it's to really cultivate that voice. And the goal is to build and get better and to offer something and then see the response and be able to cultivate based on that response. So think of it, I would say, as an experiment. Um, try expressing using your voice in a meeting or with um, someone else one on one. Gather the response, reflect and update as you know, as you gain more information and experience. The next piece that I want to stress is that you need for it to evolve, um, nurture and cultivate your voice as you're gaining more experience on your team and leverage that board. This is where you go back to the board and figure out, you know, use them as a sounding board and um, help build your, build your voice over time. So it's not something that you're trying to nail right away and there's no shortcuts to it. It's something that grows. And if you don't actively work on it, it's something that can get really stale. Um, the same idea a year later, you know, that didn't work one year, may work the next year just because context has changed. And in order to be fresh with that and be able to see that, you need to keep evolving. Um, and there's a quote that kind of connects both the don't wait and evolve really well for me. Um, and that is that anyone who isn't embarrassed of who they were last year probably isn't learning enough. This is to say that you know our things will continue to change, and that's a good thing. It, it reflects that you're learning. And the last bit I'd like to mention about using your voice is um, amplify the voice of others. So just because you have a voice doesn't mean that you're a solo artist. You're part of a bigger team, and you don't build products by yourself. So as you start to to gain uh, momentum in using your voice find opportunities to help others form and use their voice, um, help them express what's top of mind and their point of views and amplify um, their voice. So again, a quick recap is don't wait, evolve and help uh, amplify others. So the last piece um, we'll talk about is how do you test and make sure that you are actually forming and using your voice? So I call this mic check one, two. So to think about this, we'll look at a couple questions. One is how do you feel making decisions? So going back to the example of my son, um, when we were making, when I was making decisions gift by gift, I felt like I was kind of stumbling through these decisions and uh, didn't feel quite right. Um, I was just hoping that this was the right decision. And once I formed that point of view or that voice or framework, um, I felt a lot more confident and the outcome was a lot more consistent. There was a very strong consistency um, and groundedness in the decisions we were making around my son and gifts. All right, so there's one more question um, to help determine whether or not you're, um, you've formed and used your voice. And that is, can you have a healthy debate? Um, so I am someone that loves consensus and bringing people together. Uh, debate is something that I tend to shy away from. But forming an, a voice actually gave me a lot of confidence around having healthy debates. Um, and I think products, my products and teams are better off for it. So this is where if you have um, a strong uh, voice, it's something where you would be able to have a conversation and convince others um, of a particular topic. 
Similarly, when you have a voice um, and it's something that you're evolving, you should be able to be convinced of something and be able to kind of update and evolve that voice. So can someone poke holes at uh, a particular discussion, discussion or topic that you have and um, without you running, you know, the defensive, can you hold your ground, but also be open and um, willing to listen? Also, how clear is your rationale as you're going through this? Similarly, you know, if it's something that it's evolving, as someone else is presenting a, a different point of view, are you able to uh, absorb and be flexible and nimble and be able to process whether or not your particular voice needs to um, have some update? And so with that, I would like to thank you um, again for joining me on this talk. Um, I hope you found it helpful. I would like to say that I just joined a team recently, um, about two weeks ago, and this whole talk was as much a reminder for me as it hopefully um, is helpful for you. And I would love to get any feedback or thoughts um, that you have about this. Feel free to ping me um, and I'd be happy to chat. One last thing I would like to mention before we end this is that um, I had a lot of wonderful resources that I was able to use to put this presentation together. So I just wanted to put the credits here on the screen so that you can see all the wonderful uh, resources that I was able to access. So thank you to the folks that um, made this available. And with that, thank you and have a wonderful day.